We're back on People Talking Sports Thursday night. Stabby baby. Sammy. I mean, uh, I got to tell you, I got a haircut yesterday, and I'm still going to those, like, $20 haircut places. I'm on TV every day. I'm still that cheap. That, uh, <laughs> spending $20 on haircuts. And one of the guy, the guy recognized me from this show, oh, and he was like, no. seriously, you're still coming here? <laughs> Even he was, like, upset by it. Yeah, you're not doing much for that stereotype there, uh, Sam. Uh, <laughs> and that might not make it. <laughs> I liked it. Uh, I mean, this is crazy. Our boy KP got into it. Slovenia, Latvia, we all know there was a huge... Uh, huge feud. Huge feud. <laughs> yeah. It's basically 90s Knicks Pacers. Absolutely. Slovenia, Latvia, KP, and former Nick, Anthony Randolph. Anthony yeah. Randolph, you're dead to me. You're not, you're not a Nick anymore. <laughs> Once a Nick, always a Nick. You don't come a KP. You don't get to fight a, a current Nick. We'll give you an ex-Nick. Right. You can fight uh, Xavier McDaniel or yeah. Kurt Thomas. You yeah. don't get KP. Yeah, also, he's not even, the, like, the toughest Randolph. Like, Zebo <laughs> would totally knock him out. You know what I mean? Kill Absolutely. Him. And I liked that afterwards, he, like, after the fight got broken up, he said, meet me in the parking lot. Did you see that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> me, well, that'd be great if he did, and he was like, I'm really sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Can I have some Knicks tickets? Yeah. I kind of have nothing to do. I was out of line. <laughs> I like that I'm trashing that he's not. I'm playing Tampa this weekend. I'm not doing great either, let's yeah. face it. But, uh, we have a great show. Uh, that was not a good sell for my show this weekend. It's going to be a good show. <laughs> it's going to be fun. Tampa's not watching. You're yeah. fine. <laughs> we got a great show, man. Uh, I mean, Jerry Ferrara is here. Uh, Entourage, yes. Power, uh, Shooter on USA. Uh, John Wallace is here. This is the most New York show. Huge. Possible. The only thing that would be more New York is reading Dollar Slice while we're doing it. <laughs> we'll make it happen. Yeah. You hear that, interns? Actually, can we get some Dollar Slice? Yeah. <laughs> I'm a little peckish. Coming up right now, <laughs> Jerry Ferrara, People Talking Sports. You're one of the most hardcore Knicks fans I know. Yeah, I mean, it's... You're it's, for real. It is for real. There, there, it's, it's probably almost too for real. It maybe <laughs> takes up a little too much time and too big of a factor in my life. I don't see it that way. My wife does a little bit. <laughs> but I think I'm right where I need to be. You were, you were like the guy I feel like I can text when something happens with the Knicks. Like, you understand, that, you understand my pain and you understand my excitement. And you kind of filled that void for me because, you know, there's a lot of people when things don't always go well, they kind of jump shit or yeah. they they turn to another sport like me I'm good or bad I'm loyal and you are the same way so yeah. I finally have that person in my life that no matter what I know <laughs> it could be midnight and I could talk about the Knicks with someone and I'm not just like on Twitter trying to find someone and not curse me out the sad thing is it's midnight for you in LA at 3 a.m. for me <laughs> in New York, and I'm just like Ugh. Sam's up I got him <laughs> But uh, yeah, dude, you're like, I, I was so happy that you were like a for real. I feel like Knicks fans <clears throat> are good fans because you see McEnroe's at the games, Spike's at the games. Like they, they don't jump ship and it's been, it's been tough for a while, but we've stuck it out because we believe. And I think Porzingis gives us that hope, you know? Yeah, I, I recently had a discussion with someone uh, who was trying to get me off my Knicks loyalty. Like this Rich is- Eisen, the, I heard Eisen, it. Who was like, this is why you should, and I said, I, Everything you're saying is insane. Like, the, the reasons why you're a fan is because you weather the storm when things aren't so good. And then when things are great, you get to say, I, I, I was on this ship from the beginning. Yeah. Because then, you know, the bandwagon people will come on I hate when the they're great. People. And that's, that's not me. But yeah, I, I, I remember the first Nick game I watched. It was the Trent Tucker, Martin Luther King. Three. Oh it was that, it, that was the game, and that's where I was like, oh, my God, this, this team is amazing. And that shot would not have counted today. It no, wouldn't even come close to counting but today. But <laughs> 0.1 seconds on the clock. 0.1. Any? Plenty of time. <laughs> Quick release. <laughs> Quick release. I feel like this team is, they're, they're ridden off, which I kind of like. I like when we go into the season, everyone's like, they're going to suck, because that, me that means no one's looking at us. That the means current teams are. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I agree. You know, last year there was... I remember the, I wouldn't say it was like hype, but there was definitely expectations of, all right, this is certainly a playoff team, and, and sometimes things don't go your way. But yeah, I feel like this year, it's, there's not a whole lot of that expectation, but I, I have them. I'm certainly optimistic, and I think all this negativity that sort of has come Melo's way, I think is going to add fuel to his fire. And um, it's the East, man. The East he's is so bad. In, he's sneak in with 40 wins. You were one of the guys, you were like one of the only public figures that 
came out to defend the Porzingis pick when it happened. Everyone trashed Porzingis, he got booed, and you publicly, what do you say? Well, I, I, I was honest, like, I, I did watch some tape on him, it was like grainy video of him shooting around by himself, <laughs> which, I, I mean, I feel like I could get drafted underfoot if that was the guideline. Uh, and I just remember saying, like, look, I don't know a ton about him, I like, I like the size and the, 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 the fact that he could shoot. I'm reserving judgment, and then I went to Summer League, which I don't see any real fans who were writing him off on draft night. I didn't see any of you guys at Summer League. I don't know why. <laughs> Nobody was there. But they opened up against the Lakers with D'Angelo Russell, all that. And I'm like, wow, this guy's moving really good. And he, he, he doesn't look like a center but he, the way he dribbles. And I, I went to three Summer League games. And that's where I said, I think this kid's going to be great. And then, of course, six months later, everyone knew. And <laughs> But I think, I, I, not that him and I are best friends, but we have a decent relationship. But I think it's because I wasn't the first one to, to cast judgment before you even really set foot in America. What, what else are you looking for this season other than, uh, Knicks aside, like what, what's... Knicks What's aside, uh, well, I, I'm, I'm compelled and fascinated with the Isaiah Thomas Kyrie trade, as is everybody else. Um, Isaiah Thomas is my favorite non nick player. I was at that Christmas game. He was infuriating. And you know what I, I loved about it, too? Well, yes, he was infuriating, so I, I hated that what was happening to the Knicks, but he was, like, he's, like, smiling. You could see, like, he's out there, and is, this is exactly what he, wants, what he wants to do in life. Like, he is yeah. as happy as he possibly could be. But, yeah, he was infuriating. Yeah. And that was an infuriating game, because Marcus Smart hit a three from the corner. Oh, I know. Jay Crowder hit like three straight threes on us, and I was like, Yeah, we don't guy... care too much, though. We yeah. don't care too much. <laughs> <laughs> we remember exact plays <laughs> that happened on Christmas Day. I, was, I had Kenny Anderson sitting across from me, and he was mocking me. Because he could see I was getting so upset, so he was just going, ha, 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 ha. I hit a shot, and I was like, dude, come on. That's not, it's, that's not, that's not cool. You're, that you're cool. a point guard. You shouldn't I, do that. I know, but he played for the Celtics. He's a Celtics fan because he played for the Celtics. That's right. But he's a New Yorker. I'm just sorry, I'm going through the game. <laughs> it's like down nine, I remember the comeback. Yeah, no, we care too much, but it's, it's, listen, it's time. Like the season is almost here and there's no better place yeah. than the garden. And you, you want the games to be competitive. So when the Knicks are good, it's just, it's just the best. It's, you feel like, yeah, we're like, it's like someone getting dumped and that for like three years, and you're like, I'm ready to love again. I'm ready. <laughs> I want to see I'm what's ready. out there. I'm ready for the playoffs again. I'm but I ready. I still remember that, that put back dunk by Shumper against the Pacers, and I was like, oh my God, we're back in it. We need it. We need, and I feel like this team, the, the East is weak enough that we could, we could sneak in, I think. Yeah, listen, I, I, I think that you can't write any team off before the season starts, and I really think it, the talent is there. It's, it's really going to be up to, like, do these guys come together and find team chemistry? I think, like, obviously people make decisions based on analytics and the matchups on paper, and all that stuff does hold up, but I think team chemistry is something big, and we haven't necessarily had, had it to its fullest in the last couple of years, so I, if that can happen, yeah, I, I just want playoff games. I'd be very happy with playoff games. It's, it's, it's a great feeling. I feel like we're, it's going to happen. I feel it. This is. <laughs> Don't fire me up, Sam. I'm going to pick this chair up right down. now. I'm taking this chair This is, this is going to be an amazing episode. More on people talking sports with Jerry Ferrara and John Wallace right after this. <laughs> kill it. That's kill it. I'm, I'm so fired, I'm fired up, up right dude. I, I'm, I want it. I Let's want go. It. We're back on People Talking Sports. We have an amazing panel here today. First off, he played ball in uh, Rochester, then at Syracuse, then for the Knicks. This guy is so New York, he asked Ed Koch how he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, second, you know, from Entourage, from Power, from a, a part in the movie Sully. And like Sully, this show is in need of an emergency rescue. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, third, one week into hiring him, he took a two-week vacation. <laughs> Thanks for coming back, Stavros. Okay. I'm going to do siesta in the middle of the, in the <laughs> show, too. I'm European now. We're talking. This is like a. This is a squad right here. This, Stavros, you say you played center. And <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Roland Park Middle School. <laughs> Roland Park Middle School, class of '99, center. The five. This maybe. is before the stretch five. So you were in the post. That's right. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. You, were, you were down there banging. Yeah. I was banging bodies. I get it. I You're get a point it. guard. You're a freak. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a point guard because there's just no other position that could actually play at my height. So, but I heard uh, you say on Reddick's podcast, you said NBA comparison, Chris Paul. I mean, yeah, I think highly of myself. <laughs>
I mean, we're all Knicks people here. This is disrespect. The ESPN list came out. Melo got ranked behind Lonzo Ball, which is insane. He hasn't played a game yet. Drew Holiday, Eric Gordon, Danny Green, Robert Covington. <laughs> this would make sense if the list were emotional. You know? <laughs> He's been through a lot, but like this is pure. I saw Steve Nash defended him on Twitter, which made me happy. I've seen a lot of guys have. I, I saw Kenny Smith came out and said some. I think CJ McCollum. I don't. I, well, McCollum wants him. Well, yeah, I know. So, yeah. but I, yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty horrified by the whole thing. I, and I guess maybe that was the point was to maybe get this kind of reaction and get people talking. But it's, it's, I, I'm not a fan of that ranking system. Ugh. On Team USA, where the best players are playing, and when everyone is like the best coming out of him, he's like the best player on that team. Malcolm Brogdon was ranked <laughs> ahead of him, like a 28-year-old rookie that can't shoot. I don't. I mean, what is going on? It, it, it's, it's insane. I'm not going to say much because I'm so biased because I love Melo. Syracuse, yeah. New York, obviously. So, um, you know, obviously I think that list is just atrocious. And um, Melo should be, you know, I, I think he's still a top 20 NBA player. He's a first ballot Hall of Famer. That's a lock. And, you know, he just hasn't had the help around him over the last couple of years. When he had a little help, we won 54 games that year. So you give him a little help and he will produce. And I kind of love how he responded to it. You know, he, he said what he said. And I, I think that it's going to lead to great motivation. Not that he needs it, because on yeah. this level, I don't think that you need the media to motivate you necessarily. But it, it's not going to hurt. And I can't wait to see the next grouping of 20 people that are supposedly better than him that's going to probably come out in a couple of days. I can't wait to it's see it. It's actually me. <laughs> I'm going to be, yeah. They got my stat line, four and a half. <laughs> Damian Lillard, uh, he's been labeling out the difference between the NBA and the NFL while discussing Kaepernick. The NBA is like the progressive league. The NBA is like Bernie Sanders. Yeah. And the NFL is like Bob Dole or something, you know? <laughs> the NBA would be like the boyfriend who's like, you can tell me anything. Yeah. You know? Because like, the NFL would never do what the NBA did. Like that trans bathroom thing, that was so cool that the NBA did that, that they want to be on the right side of history. Yeah. I feel like the, the NFL doesn't even get women's rights yet. They're like, they're not even close to trans, you know? Yeah. That's, that's that's a, that's a hike from there. Absolutely. Well, Adam Silver's just a much better commissioner than Roger Goodell ever thought about being, and that's oh, where yeah. it starts, and that, that's, it trickles down from there. So, you know, kudos to Adam Silver for what he's done and what he's going to continue to do and how he empowers the NBA players. It's awesome. And what I was, from what I was getting from what Damian Lillard was saying was, like, Basically, with the whole Kaepernick to, thing too is like the league's supposed to kind of back you up in a way against the owners, like help you out with the owners, and he just is he's out there on his own basically, no support, no backup. So Lillard sounded like he was speaking from a place of, I, I, I the NBA wouldn't really do this to us probably. They've been encouraged with social activism and stuff like that. So uh, it's. It's a pretty shocking difference at this point. That's a great point, and because it, it, it starts from the top. And LeBron sure. is a social activist, and if someone like Tom Brady would say, "Yeah, you know, I, I don't think this is cool," maybe it would change. But until the top players say something, Aaron yeah. Rodgers said something, right? Mm -hmm. Did he? Yeah, yeah he said something. said something. Yeah. That helps. He bl and and then and we don't have to get too NFL heavy, but if you watch some of these games, the fact you need to tell me that Colin Kaepernick cannot play on any. Yeah, of these. there's 32 quarterbacks. I, 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 it, yeah. It's shocking. I don't it's know, shocking. man. I'm on Team Bortles still. So. <laughs> we got Bortles. We have Scott here. Scott's here. Here it is. We're back on people talking sports. We're just talking about best point guards in the league. So who? So you put Isaiah Thomas ahead of Mike Conley, both you guys. I think Mike Conley oh, is two-way. <laughs> Amazing defender. I like Mike Conley, but I, more so I put Isaiah Thomas ahead of John Wall. That's, wow, that's, that's big. Wild. Yeah. I don't know if I agree. I love Isaiah Thomas too, but. It's an interesting thing because it's like, think about if the Celtics had Mike Conley uh, making the run last year. It's like Isaiah's a better player, but. In the playoffs, especially, it's like he's five, whatever, nine, and it's like he gets victimized on defense. And of course, as a scorer, <laughs> who exploited him last year? That's true. No yeah, one yeah. exploited him. No, that's true. Isaiah. <laughs> Didn't is, Wallace does this a lot. Yeah. Have you noticed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wins a lot. He wins a lot of arguments with one line. Yeah. <laughs> I watched Isaiah yeah. Thomas in high school up at South Kent, and he was phenomenal then. Washington, last pick of the draft. Uh, the, the intestinal fortitude he showed to make the team and then go from a bench player to a starter to 
He's a superstar now. My favorite now. non-Nick yeah, yeah. non player. That's how you say that. By by far. You're such a big basketball fan. I love that you posted the picture of Isaiah and Kevin Love when they were it kids was, together. Yeah. <laughs> and now they're on because I just think I just think what a great storyline we're gonna get to. Watch. I know we're, you know it's their lives, but like these guys are playing AAU ball together. Like they're they're reunited. I don't know. I, yeah. As if Isaiah Thomas needs more motivation. Last pick of the draft, undersized, traded right. three times. Now yeah. he's and he's getting to go play with. LeBron, that article on the Players Tribune Dude. with oh his sons God. going, Dad, LeBron. Like, that's just, <laughs> I don't know, my head almost exploded when I was reading. It's one of the best articles. And, and like, I've the one kid's read. really sad, and the other one's like, you need to play with LeBron. It's amazing that he's got these kids, but they're like an angel and devil on his shoulder. <laughs> they're like, this is not the perfect segue, but <laughs> we we're going to do it anyway. We, yeah. <laughs> we can always cut it. LeVar Ball. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> <laughs> He's dropping his own signature sneaker, the Lavaricis, <laughs> and he claims they're going to cost fifteen hundred dollars. Uh, I guess seven hundred and fifty for how many points he averaged in high school. <laughs> <laughs> and, and to be clear, the the name he's trying to capitalize on Cavaricis is that where that came from? I don't even know. Because that made me smile a little bit, and I, I would pay fifteen hundred bucks to watch him on Facebook Live trying to just figure it out. Remember how he was like, "Is this thing on? Oh, I got twenty five seconds. Like, I got twenty five people watching." <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad for Lonzo. Yeah. Because he's already in L.A. He's already got so much pressure on him. Yeah. And then he's got this dad who's like, I, I guess maybe taking some of the pressure off but him because he's such a buffoon. Do you think this just happened? Or do you think it's been this way Lonzo's entire life? You know, I don't, I, I, look, I'm sure if he has a rough go of it, which a lot of rookies do. It's inevitable. And, you know, he's going to get beat up in the media anyway. But, yeah, this is definitely going to add something to it. But is this the first time he's dealt with this? I don't know. I don't think so. No, absolutely not. Yeah. No. He, and you can kind of tell he's like a quiet, reserved guy. He's the exact opposite. Of his father, it's like. Well, it was like a Kaiser Soze moment where like Lonzo was behind this the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> and really, he run, he runs. I love this. Like, Levar is scared of Lonzo, and Levar and Lonzo runs the whole thing behind in the shadows. The cramp walk. <laughs> Instead of a cramp, he just has a normal jump shot. Yeah. <laughs> this is interesting. Uh, the San Diego. Uh, I, I just did it by accident. The, the L.A. Chargers. <laughs> San Diego. That was the story. They kept calling the refs kept calling them the San Diego Chargers. I mean, this is kind of this is kind of sad. Just for the, I'm sad that San Diego lost their football team because L.A. just doesn't need two teams. No one is going to the games. It was like six dollars to get a ticket to that game, and no, you can't get a soda for six dollars <laughs> in L.A. And still, people are just like, nah, we're just gonna. Go to the beach. I mean, I don't blame them. What you want to watch Jared Goff fumble? You know what I mean? Like, the, what, just go have a nice time, enjoy some avocado, or whatever happens in LA. I'm not sure. What do you do? Well, I, I mean, <laughs> avocado's delicious. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't go after yeah, avocado. Yeah, not, what an avocado! <laughs> Trash trash I guess sinners don't eat avocado. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, it is my favorite vegetable because it's just fat. It's like the closest thing nature has to butter. Do you know what I mean? It's like green butter. I, I wake up, I go watch a lot of football in L.A., and I, I don't see tons of Rams fans. I'm talking about prior to this, tons right. of Charger fans. I mean, yeah. San Diego seemed like a great place for a football team. And St. Louis, to me, seemed like a great place for football. Like, I go to St. Louis, they don't have much over there. Yeah. I've been there. I've played their funny bone many times. They're still living in the 80s. They're smoking yeah. cigarettes. It's like... Talk about Kurt Warner. Yeah. <laughs> not over it. Best show on turf. <laughs>
blow a Super Bowl yeah. or an NBA championship for you, but there's no repercussion. I, I just think that needs to change. Well, you were talking about earlier. I mean, it's obvious. <clears throat> it's not necessarily about them having too much power, but they're human. So if you piss a ref off. And, and not to get into it too much, but, you know, some refs, like, you know, I, I thought he made a bad call. I said something to him. Probably not the right thing at that time, but I said it. <laughs> but he holds a grudge. And next game, you try to go, yeah. like, I'm sorry about that. And he's like, blowing you off and you know that game you got to be extra cut careful because right, you're right, going right. to call every call on you just like Joey Crawford did to Tim Duncan over his, his whole career which was atrocious because Tim Duncan is probably the nicest guy to ever play in the NBA yeah. I don't think he's ever thrown a punch he I don't he doesn't even really get mad ever unless he misses his bank shot so <laughs> I mean, you know. he's so nice that I feel like he likes me and we've never met you know, I feel like that's how nice a guy he is I feel like Tim Duncan likes me <laughs> He did a met. great thing. I think he would like me. Yeah, I, I call did him you? Timmy. I was roommates with Tim Duncan at the uh, oh, wow. USA World University game tryout. Oh, cool. And we were in the room for probably an hour out of four days together, like, because we just were different, you know. <laughs> to sit in the room with him, he's doing like physics homework, and I'm like, when are we going out? Like, when are, when are we doing something fun? And Quite the Tim, troublemaker. And Tim's like, yeah, I got a test in three weeks. I'm like, three weeks? He's using the, uh, I just picture him like writing out the physics of like the bank shot. He's just like. <laughs> so yeah, he's a, he, you know, he's a different, different guy, and, yeah. you know, and I can't believe someone has a, uh, a grudge with him because he's just such a nice guy. It's the most unlikely grudge <laughs> of all time. How many refs do you think gamble on the uh, on the games? Because Tim Donahue said 100 percent, which seems a bit high to me. Yeah. <laughs> so that's like sounds like an alcoholic who's like, yeah, remember how drunk we were last night? It was like it was just you. It was only yeah. yeah, you snuck a 40 into this bowling alley. None of us were drunk. <laughs> how many? What do you think the percentage of, of gambling? Because you played through this. I just don't think any of those guys are gambling. I think he was in, uh, you know outlier and that whole thing because you know they, they they have a great salary it's a you know they can still work during the you know uh, off season but you know I make 200 uh, 200 some thousand dollars a year Whoa. I wouldn't gamble on anything that's a good living man so I hope none of them let yeah. me tell you two weeks ago I volunteer reft at a flag football game <laughs> never again <laughs> talk about being underappreciated for volunteering my time I made one call the whole entire afternoon. I'm basically just keeping the clock and going like this every day. One call, and I literally was afraid for my safety leaving. I'm like, I gotta call someone to walk me to my. <laughs> These guys want to be on the game? No. Yeah. Was it Pop Warner football? No, it was like a chat. Literally, like I played in the game before, and then the rule is like, oh, one person from every team has to volunteer to ref the game after. I'm like, I'll do it. I want to be nice. It's my first time here, and I didn't go back. <laughs> <laughs> Lesson learned. Lesson well, learned. Uh, this has been a great People Talking Sports. Thank you so much, Jerry, John, Liz, Stavi, Baby. Keep watching People Talking Sports. Next week might be our last week, so keep watching. <laughs> <laughs>